of all, when we think about jobs, we have to. I mean, I, one thing is this fallacy of a lump of labor, as they call it. The economists say, you know, at least all technological revolutions, people have thought about jobs going away. But what has happened is jobs have gone created, and none of us can really forecast what gets created. I'll give you one example, right? We talk about this AI really automating, predicting, doing all these magical things. Guess what? There is labeling that happens to generate AI. I came across right here in the region in Thailand a company that was formed by, in fact, a visually impaired developer uh, to create a tech platform for labelers who are uh, neurodiverse and uh, you know and uh, disabled. So to to think that labeling was a job that was going to be something that is needed in the world, you know, five years ago none of us would have talked about it, but here it is as a mainstream job. Or take another example, I, you know. One thing, when we talk about digital transformation, we are mostly talking about it being done by software engineers. But right. citizen developers uh, are able to now take these low-code, no-code tools like Power Platform. And if you can build an Excel spreadsheet, you can build an app. So the idea of how, and how, how people participate in what are considered digital jobs, I think is going to be fundamentally redefined going forward. But for the here and the now, what do you make of the job cuts that we are hearing about that are grabbing the headlines in the technology space? That's a great question because here's an interesting thing, right? LinkedIn sort of has the following data point, right? Which is that there are more jobs that are software engineering jobs outside the tech industry than in the tech industry. So to some degree, I would say the labor markets are much more resilient. It, there's not an auto company that doesn't need software engineers. There's not an energy company that doesn't need software engineers. There's not a retailer or a bank that doesn't need software engineers. So I would imagine to the degree to which there's oversupply in one, there will be more even distribution. Right? And, and it also points, I think, to your fundamental point that like, no, no, no industry is immune from macroeconomic issues. Right? So right. everyone has to manage their costs and demand properly. But I guess what I'm coming to, uh, Satya, is that if growth continues to slow down, if your revenues continue to slow down, if there's an impact on profitability, would you cut more jobs? I think we will. We, we are very committed, as I said in our earnings call last time. But look, we are very committed to making sure that our operating expenses uh, and our revenue growth are sort of compatible. Uh, because after all, we're a company that needs to be managed super well, and we will continue to do so. And we've done that over the last 47 years through many cycles. And so, one thing that I don't want us to do is not to just over rotate on. We didn't do that. On the, on the upside, we're not going to do that on the downside because ultimately, like right now, we're also investing in technologies like cloud and AI and, and even sort of the industrial metaverse in order to be able to be there and be relevant, right? Our shareholders care about our performance today and tomorrow. All right, I, I want to talk about the U.S. economy. Jeff Bezos, uh, in a tweet to CNBC just a few weeks ago, said that it's time to batten down the hatches. How would you describe the economic situation in the U.S.? I think the U.S., at least all the data, still shows it's pretty robust. It's grown. In fact, it, even the last quarter results, at least GDP growth was, uh, in fact, it grew. Uh, and so the question is, what happens next, right? I think it, it, it's a very consumer-driven economy. And so what happens to the consumer will definitely impact. Uh, and, you know, I don't know. I'm not a macroeconomist. Uh, but the one thing that You're I not, do... But you would have a read on the economy. I think that my, my read on the economy, quite frankly, is really uh, how can digital this is the time if i had to sort of think about it, this is short time for digital tech right what i mean by that is this is about companies like ours and others to show up and help companies really do more with less right this is a great op the way i look at it and say it's like a, re a recessionary environment is a great place for us to go perform uh, both in terms of share gains uh, as well as value to customers and quite frankly optimize the cost for our customers, right? I don't want to be focused on just revenue maximizing for us. This is a time where we have a balance sheet and an income statement in the company. But for the broader economy, you, you think uh, at this point in time, how bad can it get? Well, I mean, I think, that, you know, as I said, I think every sector is going to be different. Like right as we speak, I have not seen the amount of capital investment in the United States. I, I'll come in with tech companies, right? The valuations of the tech companies because of rising rates. It seems like the market is going really harsh on them at this point in time, worrying about their growth potential going forward. And so I want to yeah, take I mean, on I, that. I don't think stock markets are the economy, right? There's a real difference between what's happening in capital markets and the real economy. If you're talking about the real economy, one of the fascinating things about the United States is the amount of capital that's getting invested in new industrial, you know, fabs being built, power plants, I mean, uh, battery factories being built. It's unbelievable to see our logistics infrastructure. So to some degree, I am much more focused on observing where, what is happening in terms of new growth inside the United States. So I'm very, very optimistic about the U.S. 
Uh, and quite frankly, the world... Optimistic in 2023 as well? 2023, to me, is a year which definitely will have some challenges because after all, we're seeing it in 2022. Yeah. But do business cycles end? And I think as business leaders, we absolutely believe business cycles do have When will this one end? And if I were doing that, I would be in a different job.